Hi, Mike. How are you? Hi, Lee. I'm good. Good. You are. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you for doing this with me. As you know, Dr. Laura Huey in Canada and I have started something called CrimCom. And what it is, is sort of taking off of SciComm. And what we're hoping to do is help other criminologists get their research out there more public, talk to the press, do YouTube videos, do anything that gets our research out of the academic journals into the hands of the people that need to hear it most, which are policymakers and practitioners and the like. And what I wanted to talk to you about today, over drinks for happy hour. So welcome to my first happy hour for the Crim Commies. Uh, Crim Commies, I just thought about that. Sounds like an award show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or a socialist event. Um, I wanted to talk to you about media. So media outreach, talking to the press, because out of every academic I know, you're the one that does it the most. I think the, I remember you telling me a story that ASU, the press team at ASU reached out to you once and said that no one at ASU had done as much press as you had. So I figured you'd be the pers perfect person to talk to about this. Yeah, I've done a lot, probably approaching 150 different interviews now. So um, I've, I've got some uh, lessons learned for sure to impart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's launch into it so that we don't, you know, get too tipsy. Uh, why, why? Why would any of us want to talk to the press? Because I know a lot of young academics and, God, older academics like me, that the thought of getting a bad soundbite is terrifying. Why would you do it? Yeah, and I'm sure that, um, you know, a lot of young assistant professors out of the blue will just get that email from the local media. You know, it's what local reporters do when there's a criminal justice issue, uh, whether it's police courts, corrections, whatever it is, and they want a soundbite from uh, an expert, they're going to contact the local university and ask to speak to somebody. And, and the question is, why on earth would you do such a thing? Um, you know, it's not going to help you with your tenure and promotion. Um, you know, I do put them on my CV. You can do that, but nobody nobody looks at it. Uh, and and there is some degree of risk that you you know you could fumble the ball and and say the wrong thing. So you know, why on earth would you uh, would you consent to be interviewed on on TV and the radio? And uh, I think there are a couple of reasons you that I think it's a good idea to do it. And, and the first is that you know it represents an opportunity opportunity to talk to people to. Um, to sway opinions, to inform the public. You know, we get to educate in the classroom all the time, but this is an opportunity to educate, uh, you know, a much larger audience. Presumably they've contacted you because you've got some degree of expertise on the topic and, and you can um, impart some wisdom, if you will. Uh, so that, I think, is the big reason. You know, there's an ego boost, of course. We all have big egos and it's nice to be stroked a little bit and to be on TV and, um, but it's also great for the university. That's why universities, big and small, have uh, media relations departments. They have people on staff whose sole job is to put faculty in, in, in front of cameras or on the radio so that you can um, you know, publicize the, uh, the university and the good work that's being done there. So I think those are reasons. You know, it's also, it's kind of cool. I just, I just did one in Tampa because my parents moved to Tampa, so I thought, <laughs> It was cool to see me on the local CBS station in Tampa and they recorded it on their old VCR. It was awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yes, yes, they still have a VCR. <laughs> so how do you get started? I'm, I'm a young academic. Well, I'm not, but hypothetically, I'm a young academic and I, I, want, to, I want to start doing this. I want to get my research out there. I want to talk to the press. I, I think I've got something to say. How do you get started? Yeah, I would, I would start, you, you know, the, the, the CJ department that you're in probably doesn't have media folks um, unless you're in a, in a, in a big uh, program, but your college probably does. So you can, you can start there, just poke around the college, see if there, there are people who, uh, who have connections to the local media. But like I said, more times than not, um, you don't have to do a whole lot if you're, if you're you know, working and teaching in criminal justice, especially today. People are going to contact you for stories. Uh, policing on courts, corrections, drug abuse, organized crime, whatever it might be. Um, so it's, it's not hard. Um, you know, the, like I said, the local media is always looking to 
put an expert on the TV, even if it's only for five seconds, so that they can um, show some credibility with their story. Okay, G give us some tips. So, I, you know, I just got a call. I got a call from, let's say it's, it's something big, and uh, PBS wants to talk to me about something that is policing related, but it's not directly in my area. What kind of advice would you give me? I, there are a couple of things I would recommend. First is if you're just getting started, start small. So don't, you know, don't make your opening interview on 60 Minutes or CNN or Fox News. You know, start with the, the local newspaper or maybe the local TV station. Don't go live. You know, most of the time you do this, it's, it's being recorded, but they'll be edited and, you know, they'll be editing and, and um, you know, there's the opportunity to... Um, to make some changes. Usually, you know, you'll, you'll hear from the reporter maybe with follow-up questions, things like that. So, uh, so start small would be the first, uh, the first uh, piece of advice from me. The other is, um, you know, do some homework. You know, like I said, they probably contacted you because they think you're an expert in X. And you may be. An expert in sex? X, X, <laughs> Y, and Z. Uh, I'm gonna leave that. <laughs> And ignore it. You're an expert in a topic, and but you, it's still a good idea if they're asking you about police body worn cameras or prisoner reentry. Go and you know read your last paper real quick, and and just, you know spend five or ten minutes brushing up so um, you have some things to say. So definitely you know don't go in and wing it. Um, you know that's when you're likely to say something as silly or stupid. And then um, you know remember your audience. This is not an ASC presentation. You know, you, you gotta be, you gotta be interesting or you're never going to get contacted again. Um, the best thing you can do is to be conversational and to, to be relaxed. And then, um, you know, the last piece of advice I would give there, I, there's this great commercial and it's uh, a guy who's getting a tattoo and he's super nervous and the tattoo artist, uh, just starts with the ink and, and the guy's like, uh, the guy says, well, aren't, aren't you supposed to trace it first? And the tattoo artist says, stay in your lane, bro. Well, that's that you want to stay in your lane, bro, when you are doing uh, media interviews. Stick to what you know. If you get a, you know, if you get a request and it's a little bit outside of what, you know, you're comfortable with, do not take it. Also, during the interview, if it kind of turns in a direction that you didn't anticipate and you get a question uh, that you're not comfortable answering, it, do not answer it. So just kind of stick to what you know. Stay in your lane, bro. I, I know you're good at that because I've thrown you some questions before over drinks and, and you always redirect me back to something you're more comfortable answering. Yeah, I did one interview for, and this was a live interview for you MS. Did it. You just did it. I gave you an embarrassing question. You redirected me again. <laughs> How you do it? Yeah, I did a live interview for MSNBC and it was, you know, they're, they're super liberal. And this happens whether you're doing, you know, liberal media or conservative media. And this guy was asking me all these kind of um, questions that he, he expected me to, to blast away at, uh, you know, the current presidential administration. And, and I didn't. And so I never got invited back, but I also didn't give him that bad soundbite for me that, you know, would have haunted me, um, you know, into the future. How do you avoid the bad soundbite? I mean, that's, that's what we're all terrified of is, is there, it, I'm just afraid that they're going to ask me a question and I'm not gonna pivot and I'm gonna give them the bad sound bite. Is it okay to go back then and to say, wait, to clarify? Yeah, you know, most of these, most of the time you're doing interviews, it's not, it's not live. It's not live on the radio, it's not live on TV. So you have the opportunity to stop and say, wait, um, you know, I wanna, you know, I wanna edit that answer. I wanna, I wanna change this or I want to say that. So you can go back and forth and, and you can tell them to drop that, that last part that you said, that's fine. But like I said, the, the best way to do that is think about teaching a class. You could do the same thing in a class. You could say, you know, something really stupid that, that's going to get you in trouble. How do you, how do you not do that? You, you do a little bit of homework, you prep, you stick to what you know. Okay. Have you ever gotten fan mail? Have you ever gotten, you know, the emails or the, the phone calls afterwards just knocking everything you said in a, in a report? Yeah, and one more, one more point on the soundbite that I, I wanna add, um, and I do this with my homework now, is I try to plant good soundbites 
I think about what would lead on a, you know, a, a local CBS news station if they're, I'm talking about body worn cameras, what can I say that um, they would, they would just grab and, and kind of run with. So while you're avoiding the bad sound bite, you can also kind of fish a little bit by throwing some things out there uh, that you think they might, they might grab onto. Um, the, the fan mail thing, uh, you know, it's when you do media interviews, uh, a lot of people are going to see it. And especially now, uh, I work in policing and, you know, there's a, a lot of controversy uh, around policing now. People are talking about defunding the cops and all this stuff. So when you do interviews, people are going to see it and they might get pissed off. They might be upset with what you said. And if you're working for a university, it's not hard to find an email uh, or an email address. And, you know, just it actually it just happened to me. It, it, it hasn't happened often, uh, but it has happened in the past. And then it, it happened um, just a couple of weeks ago. I did an interview on the, um, the police flag, the, the thin blue line flag with, you know, it's the American flag, but it's, it's for cops and it's a, it's a show of solidarity for the police, but I did an interview for, uh, the Marshall project on the flag. And, um, I don't know, maybe a week later, I, I got two emails in one day that were, were pretty, uh, critical, shall we say, what I said, what I, lots of curse words, lots of caps. You're an idiot. One, one, said I was a, an embarrassment for the state of Arizona. Um, and I'm thinking, how to, you know, that's, how did these... That's a really high bar. Yeah, not much. <laughs> uh, so how, 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 I'm thinking, how did these kinds of folks catch on to a story in the, on, in the Marshall Project's website? And it, what happened is Politico had picked up the story, and I didn't know this. And then um, uh, what happened was a, a chief of police for a, a university on the north... Uh, in, I think it was University of West Virginia was um, he was doing an interview on TV and he had the, that flag in his front yard and the students and, and some of the faculty were in an uproar when they saw on TV that the police chief of the university police department had this flag and it became a whole big thing. And one of the, uh, one of the CJ professors at the university uh, tweeted about it and then included a link uh, in her tweet to the Politico story, which had one quote from me. And I had done a long interview than the Marshall Project and the whole thing was run in Politico, but um, it was just that one quote that, that, got, um, that got reported on this. And what happened is it, it showed up on a, um, like a very pro-police blog. Anyway, so it, it said Mike White, Arizona State University. And, and next thing I know, I'm getting uh, pretty vicious emails from people telling me I'm a moron and an embarrassment for the state of Arizona. But um, you, you can't let that bother you, Who you know, it's, it's just not something I'm going to stay up at night thinking about. Um, and if you do these kinds of things, it's, it's probably going to happen and you just get, you can't take it personally because these people don't know you. And as long as you're comfortable with what you said and what I did when I, I, when I got those emails, I, I said, wow, shit, how on earth did, did these morons read the Marshall Project's website? So when I backtracked it and I finally got to the, the story that was run on the police blog, the quote was exactly what I said. It was 100% accurate, but it was taken a little bit out of context, but I was comfortable with what I said. So, you know, I'm not going to get upset about a couple of knuckleheads who were sending me emails. Yeah. Good. But the point is, if you're going to do this, be, be ready for that because it might happen. Sure. Well, thank you, Mike. I think I've, I've sort of racked your brain on this stuff. Anything else you wanted to add before I go? And No, just, you know, the other thing I would say, the other reason to do it, uh, you know, it's always nice to get an email from your dean uh, who says that he was eating dinner with his family and he saw you on TV talking about X, Y, and Z. So uh, well, it might not have, help you with your tenure and promotion package. It, it can, you know, it can benefit you in a lot of different ways professionally. Sure. And at the end of the day, we're here to educate the public too, aren't we? We're, we're experts or at least we're, we, we know a lot in a subject. And why we should do this is so that we can tell more people about the subject and the empirical research on that subject. Yeah, I mean, think about you know, a lot of people complain now about all we do is we publish in journals that no one reads except other criminologists. We go to conferences and present to only other criminologists and it's what good can we do? Well, this is an opportunity to, to do some good and to, like you said, to educate. Yeah, it is. And, and that's again why Laura and I started this. So thank you so much. All right, my pleasure.
I look forward to reading your next interview about body-worn cameras. All right. Bye-bye.